good morning. Morning. For the record, who am I speaking with? I'm Greg Nelson. All right. How are you doing today? Very excellent. Yourself? Oh, quite well, thank there you. It is. All right. So, uh, for the for the background, you have a uh, a list of credentials that are longer than most essays. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, how long have you known Ajahn Chai? Met Ajahn Chai 35 years ago, so 1984. It's a long time. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> At, uh, St. Louis camp, and then the, the longest time I spent with him right after that was then, uh, 1985, at the Smoky Mountain camp for a week, which was really a really unique experience because, you know, being a camp, I didn't know what type of camp it was because other camps you just came, but you're supposed to bring a tent and a sleeping bag, and I brought a suit, I brought my bag, but no sleeping bag and no tent, and so he he brought me into his. Uh, into the instructor corner and set up a little bed right next to his. And that's really, I you know, didn't know him other than just a couple of seminars. Yeah. And I was like, wow, oh, that's pretty, that's pretty different. It is. It is. Yeah. Very personable. Uh, yeah. Uh, Excellent. Individual. He's, he's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> how, how, um, how long have you been involved in the Thai Boxing Association then? since then? Since then. Yeah. Once, uh, once I met Achan and his, personality and his his mentality and, and just who he is as a person i was coming from a, a a wrestling background as well and so very intense and so thai boxing was basically striking's version of wrestling right really intense and i had this now like really super in, intense like wrestling coach like old school right right Except he was Asian and he was small and he was even more intense. <laughs> and he just, it was like, wow, this guy's awesome. And, you know, it just pushed you, made, d- drove you f- kind of farther sometimes than you wanted to go. But that became the habit. Right. Yeah. That's carried on forever since then. Yeah, you had the puke bucket back then, didn't you? Oh, yes. <laughs> yes, we had all, all of them. And in fact, a lot of times, even at a seminar or wherever you're at, if you're at Tom, Type pad would go like five, ten, five until someone puked, and then he'd say, "Okay, switch." <laughs> nice. Yeah, <laughs> so it was intense, but it was like that was what I wanted. That's what was what was I I needed really more than anything. Yeah, I think more more than people realize, most sports need that these days. Yes, yeah. and aren't getting it. No. <laughs> so. In that respect, how, what has been the impact of Ajahn Chai and Thai Boxing Association in your life? The biggest thing is his, like I said, his mentality and his kind of his philosophy. His mentality and his philosophy, you know, being a Thai, they're very direct. There's not a lot of, well, you know, you could have done a little better here. It's like, no. Yes. <laughs> Do. You know, so it's very emphatic and very straightforward and very simple to understand, right? Right. And for me, as a as a super hard charging driven athlete, that was I didn't want a bunch of flowers. Right. I wanted to do this and do it super hard. Now do this, but don't do it hard. All right, that's good. I can follow these directions really easy. Yeah. And then when you did do something that was either really good or not what he was looking for immediately you got feedback okay and for me i could deal with it because that's how i i i, I grew up as a as a as an athlete especially as a wrestler when someone when you didn't do something right you know there wasn't the old pcp right praise correct praise it was like what are you doing <laughs> this, this is how i want you to do it right i'm like and i'd be like okay okay and that kind of drove me so that was perfect for my mentality and how i, I like so and again that's kind of like even you know, that kind of the whole time mentality. It's very direct. The language is very direct. You know, if they look at you and go, man, you're fat. <laughs> right. That's it. There's, you can't kind of say, well, you know, you're kind of overweight a little bit. It's cut and dry. Yeah, it's very straightforward. And for me, I think more people need that. And not, not in the fact that you're being rude. Right. Not in the fact that you're trying to be a, an ass to anybody. But you're just being truthful, right. and, but you're doing it in a, in, a, in, in a way that you have one objective, and that's to make them a better person. Yeah. And that's really what Achan's been about since day one. He's going to do whatever it takes, as he said, to make sure this person becomes better at what they're doing. Yeah. And 
And sometimes people are looking from the outside and they're like, whoa, that was a little direct. And I go, yeah, but that's what the people need. Yeah. If a correction needs to be made, make the correction. But then he is without, I don't know if he's ever studied this stuff at all, but it seems like he has. But without knowing what spotlighting is, he spotlights people. He pulls out, he pulls out anybody like, like a person that no one would think is a, the best one in the in a place and he'll okay you do the combo and then he'll correct them until they do it right in front of everybody and he's like that's it if he can do it you can do it bam that's right and it lifts everybody up and so he does that type of stuff all the time but he's not afraid to call people out that aren't the, the best and he'll correct them in front of everybody and but he does it in a way that it's constructive constructive for everyone and especially the person that is doing it because then afterwards they're feeling like yeah just got called out and I got corrected and he said look at him if he can do it you can do it and so everybody gets built and that type of mentality is huge I love it because you're helping so many people that way yeah and again you know he does it very directly yeah and that's it's kind of been a, a real kind of a guiding point in, in the way I teach you know now I, sometimes if I'm with my students I'll do a little bit more of the, hey, that was pretty good. But, you know, that was great. However, now what, why don't we do this? Yeah. You know? But with my fighters, I'm just straight, straight. No sugar, was. No sugar coating. No, it's like, <laughs> dude, what are you doing? Get over here. This is what I want to do. Let's get after it. Go. Yeah. And that's led to probably, I mean, you run one of the best mixed martial arts gyms in the country. And you have some of the best fighters out there. Yeah, we have a really unique blend in the fact that we have, you know, good, a, a lot of students. So this a lot of everyday people coming in and training, you know. And then right next to them, we might have a, you know, UFC champion or a really high-level MMA fighter or, a, you know, guys fighting in glory and they're training right next to them. And then the next class, that guy's teaching. Yeah. So they have, we don't, we've always had that mentality, like, you are always a student. You never become the, you know, you're constantly working, you're constantly a student, you work with other students. The way that we have trained has always been kind of the way that Achan has, has uh, always done things in seminars. You both hold the pads for each other. Right. You both push each other. You both are accountable for each other. And that's how we do with our fighters. That's how we do with our students, you know. So... That's been a huge influence. And now, obviously, martial arts is my livelihood. It's my lifestyle. And a big part of that is because of Achan Chai and how he was that mentor toward me. Yeah. Well, you've definitely been a big impact in my life because you you helped when nobody else would reach out. And you actually helped me find somebody that was fairly close I could train with. And, uh, and I've always appreciated that. Oh, nice. I've always appreciated the, the, the guidance that you gave me and uh, helping me become closer and more integrated into the World Tough Boxing Association. Nice. So I, I definitely have appreciated that. Yeah, you know, it's, a, it's like a, I'm really f believing that you pay it forward because for me right now, and this is how I feel about everybody who is doing Thai boxing in their school right now and making a livelihood, there's a reason for that. Yes. His name is Rajan Chai because he started it before anyone else was out there. And he was yeah. traveling the country, traveling the world, weekend after weekend, camp after camp, seminar after seminar, healthy or not, under any circumstance. Right. Giving, 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 you know. And then, you know, for me, it's like, yeah, it's, that's what you do. That's 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 my example, and I'm going to keep giving back to, to the Thai Box Association. I'm going to keep giving back to my students. I'm going to keep giving back to everybody who comes, you know, within earshot of me. Yeah, that's the goal. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, you've helped run what I think is uh, was a fantastic IDC. Um, what are your thoughts going forward on the IDC of this one and future ones? I think that IDC is a great thing because we can really isolate on a few things and, and we can get a, a couple of different instructors in there that people can see that Achan has definitely influenced and has shaped them. But Achan is also, for those who don't know, he's always been the person who's introduced you to other great Muay Thai people. Like in 1989, 
when I went to uh, Thailand for the first time, we went to uh, Sopantale, and that's where Rainbow was training at the time. Oh, okay. And so Achan made that happen, and we got in there, and we were training, and right away, it was like, whoa, this is, this is different. This is unbelievable. And clinching with anyone from a 13-year-old kid who could toss you around because they've been doing it for their whole life, and they understood that game so well, it just made such an influence. But at the same time, it's like he's never shied away from, I want you to watch this guy. Right. Watch how he moves. Right. Do what he does. You know? And that, to me, even builds my, my, my game better. It makes me more loyal because, I, like, yeah, he just cares about my development. Yeah. He wants me to, to grow. And so for him now to allow other instructors to come in and help out is, is great and it allows me to pay back, which I think is huge, and then give new people and people that are trying to develop their own schools uh, you know, a shortcut in a way that, you know, when we were starting out, there was not a lot of stuff going on on how to run a school, right. I mean, unless you were straight up karate. So you had to modify everything. And now it's like, We've had enough schools and enough success that we, we've changed what we have to change, and now we can give it back to other school owners. And then, not only that, when I'm at the IDC, I'm getting ideas. You know, so I, I'm constantly, for me, that's the whole mentality. You're constantly learning, you're constantly giving back. Yeah. And that's that's why I think the IDC is so, so awesome right now, because it's just continuing. Everybody has something to offer. And when you got a bunch of people that are running schools and training people and doing Thai boxing and been around Achan and have traveled and seen things and developed their own schools and have questions that make you think a little bit more and, and allows you to kind of share your experiences, your ups and your downs, that just is going to help everybody and it, it helps me as well. Awesome. Thank you so much for your time. All right. Thank it's you. It's been a pleasure. Awesome. Yeah, thank you so much. Cool.